To ask the Scottish Government what its current policy is regarding the deletion or retention of WhatsApp messages by Ministers. Deputy First Minister. I would refer to my statement to this chamber on the 31st of October last year. The policy regarding deletion or retention of WhatsApp messages is set out in the Scottish Government's well-established and overarching records management policy and supplemented by the mobile messaging apps guidance. I would reiterate that the Scottish Government does not routinely use WhatsApp for decision-making or to provide advice to ministers. In the event WhatsApp were used for such a purpose, the information would be retained for the corporate record in line with existing Scottish Government guidance and policy. Sandish Gohani. So I want to declare an interest as a practising NHS GP. As a GP, I worked on the front lines during the pandemic. My priority was always to look after my patients' health. Yet in contrast, during COVID, the Scottish Government was joking about deleting their WhatsApp messages with one official joking that plausible deniability is my middle name. We know the shameful culture of secrecy came from the very top, with Nicola Sturgeon and John Swinney deleting all their messaging. The same Nicola Sturgeon who stood at the daily briefings with a pretense of moral superiority. And yet behind the scenes, it is clear the Scottish Government was mocking us. Yeah. Believing none of this would ever come to light. The Government is shameful. How can this Government be trusted by the people of Scotland? Will the Cabinet Secretary take this opportunity to apologise for the behaviour to the people of Scotland? Deputy First Minister. Well, let me say uh, first and foremost, what is important, of course, is that the inquiry is allowed to do its job in scrutinising all of the decision making, the messages, and it's for the inquiry, obviously, to determine if it has concerns about the application of mobile messaging policy or their content, and we should allow them to get on with that. And of course, it is one aspect of the many issues that they're taking evidence on and reflecting upon. And what is important in all of this for those who worked on the front line, those who are the COVID bereaved families, is that lessons are learned from the pandemic to help us prepare better for the future, which is why this government will fully comply with the UK inquiry. And it's of course why we established a separate Scottish inquiry, the only part of the UK to do so. Sandish Gilhani. No apology there. Well, deleting WhatsApp messages wasn't the only skewed priority from the nationalists during the pandemic. Extraordinary minutes from an SNP government cabinet meeting confirmed restarting work on independence and a referendum with the arguments reflecting the experience of the coronavirus crisis. And that was considered at the height of the public health emergency. This shows no matter how serious in situation, nothing will stop the SNP from trying to pursue their political obsession with independence. Perhaps this was amongst the reasons that all electronic messaging was deleted. Can the Cabinet Secretary look the public in the eye and tell them that campaigning for independence and another referendum was the right priority during the height of the pandemic? Deputy First Minister. Well, I think it's pretty clear and is clear that the focus of the Scottish Government was on the pandemic yeah. and on dealing with the issues of the day in relation to the response to the pandemic. And I think uh, looking at all of the information that has been provided to the inquiry uh, will support uh, that position. Um, I should also uh, say uh, to Sandish Gulhani that you know, clearly uh, evidence uh, that is being put in front of the inquiry. The inquiry should be allowed to interrogate that. They will interrogate uh, those who, were core, uh, who are core participants, who were at the front uh, of leadership in the Scottish Government at that time, some of who uh, are no longer in office, some of who are still in office. The inquiry should be allowed to do that. And in the same way, of course, as the inquiry, when it was sitting in London, was interrogating some of the decision-making, some of the conversations and chat that happened across social media at the time. Some of that is very uncomfortable, there's no doubt about it, but what's important at the heart of this is that lessons are learned about the decision-making on the pandemic, so that if it happens again, as it may well do in the future, that lessons are learned to make sure we get the response right and as, as, uh, as, um, as fully 
uh, compliant and uh, as front-footed as we possibly can, learning the lessons that we are at the moment from the pandemic. Jackie Bailey. Ken Thompson, the man who drafted the Scottish Government's records management policy, was advising people how to avoid complying with it. The National Clinical Director, Jason Leach, who helped shape the COVID regulations, was advising the current First Minister how to avoid the rules. And Nicola Sturgeon, who promised transparency, has alongside John Swinney and senior civil servants deleted WhatsApp messages on an industrial scale. No lessons learnt there, Deputy First Minister. So whether messages were deleted nightly or weekly, it is clear that Jason Leach wiped his messages completely and seemed to find the period during the pandemic all quite funny, judging from the messages we have seen. This isn't just a matter for the inquiry, it's a matter for the Scottish Government too. So if the Scottish Government agrees that Jason Leach's behaviour was inappropriate, is it not time that he was sacked? Deputy First Minister. Well, Jason Leach isn't here to defend himself, as Jackie Bailey knows, and I don't think it's fair to focus in this chamber on any individual. The inquiry is the place that should be allowed to interrogate anyone, whether it's Jason Leach or whether it's the former First Minister, who of course will give evidence, as will the current First Minister. It should be for the inquiry to be able to interrogate the evidence, whether that's on messages or decision making or anything else. In terms of the issue of the frequency of deletion, it's actually not about the frequency of deletion of messages, but rather the importance of capturing any relevant information in line with records management policy. So whether that is on a day-to-day -day basis, a week-to-week -week basis or a month-to-month -month basis, it is important that the information on decision-making and salient points is captured for the records management policy, which is in line, actually, with the Section 61 Code of Practice on Records Management, which was in consultation with the Scottish Information Commissioner that states that information should only be kept as long as it is needed. And provided this duty is met, the medium that contained the information can be deleted. So that was in line with the Scottish Information Commissioners. And as I say, um, anyone who um, the inquiry will have in front of them will be able to put all of these questions. It's important the inquiry is allowed, presiding officer, to get on with its job. Alex oh, Cole Hamilton. Thank you very much, uh, Presiding Officer. Uh, Presiding Officer, the Deputy First Minister talks about lessons being learned by this inquiry. Right now, tens of thousands of COVID bereaved families are looking to this inquiry for answers and those lessons. But these are answers and lessons they may be forever denied because despite assurances made to this Parliament and to the national media, it seems that Nicola Sturgeon never had any intention of passing her WhatsApp messages, messages that would have shown the culture and the calculation behind her pandemic response to the inquiry that she knew was sure to follow. Perhaps this is the biggest scandal in the history of devolution, the denial of justice to the bereaved families of the pandemic. So does the Deputy First Minister agree that when she has finished giving her evidence to the inquiry that she should come to this place, to this parliament and explain herself? Deputy First Minister. Well, first of all, uh, the the COVID bereaved families are of course at the heart of this and that is why it is quite right that the inquiry should be pursuing any line of inquiry it wants to whether it's on uh, mobile messaging messages or whether it's on the decision making and that is the role of the inquiry it's why it was established it's also why of course this government established the Scottish COVID inquiry in order to give that additional scrutiny of matters relating to Scotland, not just the UK inquiry. And that was a decision that was made only by the Scottish Government. In terms of the, the former First Minister's evidence, clearly she has still to give her evidence. Uh, she has also said that there are messages that have been submitted to the inquiry. And I think what we should allow the inquiry to do is to take evidence from those core participants, including the former First Minister, and then we should allow the inquiry to make its judgments uh, about what it has heard. And it, well, I am sure will do so in a very robust manner. Graeme Simpson. Thank you. Um, shouldn't police actually be 
investigating whether the activities of the message deleting COVID cabal were in breach of the Inquiries Act. Deputy First Minister. Well, of course, that is a matter for Police Scotland to determine if they think that any laws have been broken. Uh, what I am saying today very clearly is that the, the records management policy is very clear about what should be retained and why and what should be put into the record management policy, any salient points, anything around decision making or anything of importance. The records management policy that was developed in consultation with the Information Commissioner also sets out when it's appropriate to delete messages. Now that policy is kept under constant review and uh, any changes to the policy will of course uh, be brought forward uh, and Parliament will be made aware of that. But any matters relating uh, to the police or anything else are not a matter uh, for me, they're a matter for Police Scotland. Michael Mara. Thank you, President Officer. Of course, it's not only ministers and civil servants who were watching on TV. When the First Minister asked officials to look into record keeping, did he discover that other officials had also destroyed evidence? If so, how many took that action and destroyed evidence that would be required by the inquiry? Deputy First Minister. Well, as I said, the Scottish Government keeps policies under review and records management will be considered uh, next at the, the next Information Governance Board uh, when it meets this Thursday because, of course, the First Minister had asked the Permanent Secretary to ensure that all steps are being taken to meet the inquiry's requests and the Solicitor General to satisfy herself that the Scottish Government has met all of its legal obligations. That process has uh, concluded uh, and uh, the First Minister uh, has uh, received the assurances that he uh, required, which confirms that in responding to the UK and Scottish COVID inquiries, legal advice has been taken and acted upon uh, appropriately. But, as I say, there is, um, the, the policy is kept under constant review and a paper identifying areas for review has been tabled for discussion at the Information Governance Board that meets this week.